Day one here in Indianapolis at the NFL Scouting Combine in the books. We heard from general manager Adam Peters. We heard from head coach Dan Quinn. And one of them may have tipped their hand on the quarterback situation, but both of them sent me down a rabbit hole. That and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into today's episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Just go to jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders to sign up today and you'll be coming inside. You'll get news analysis, one-on-one conversations, with me, bonus content, bonus documents sometimes, and transcripts of press conferences and all kinds of fun stuff. No hashtags, no apps, all of it delivered directly to your phone. And then you can let me know what you think directly from your phone. So go to jointsubtext.com slash lockdown commanders today and become an insider. I'm David Harrison, your host for this show, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for commandercountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. And I'm here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and as always, everydayers. I continue to appreciate your continued support for the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. That's locked on today to get started, not locked on today in the URL. On today's episode, we've got some commanders-related news. FedEx Field is getting a facelift here pretty soon, and we're going to hear from Adam Peters and Dan Quinn themselves. But first, we are going to start with a conversation about the quarterback position, kind of what I took away from today's press conference. And, well, it's an interesting ride. So go down it with me, uh, if, if you will. Uh, it's it's the most important position, so obviously there's a lot of conversation about it. They they both fielded a lot of questions about the position, and they said some things that are somewhat definitive, but also somewhat not definitive. So what did we learn from Adam Peters and Dan Quinn? Uh, again, you'll hear what they had to say here in a minute. But first, I'm going to start off by telling you kind of my biggest takeaways from today's conversations. And for starters, Adam Peters was asked a question about Brock Purdy in the San Francisco 49ers. And at the end of his answer, it was a very standard where I came from, my former team type of answer. But at the end of it, he said, uh, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but now I've got to go look for another new quarterback or another quarterback. And immediately some eyebrows were raised and talking amongst the media group and looking at social media. And certainly some people took it as an anti Sam Howell statement, as an Adam Peters saying, I don't have a quarterback, so I need to go find one. Uh, unlike in San Francisco where he had Brock Purdy. Some of it just look at it as he meant that he found Brock Purdy. Now he's got to go find another Brock Purdy and he doesn't know Sam Howell. He knows the tape. He knows the stats. He knows what happened last year, but he is just now starting to get to know uh, Sam Howell. And we'll hear a little bit from Adam Peters later on how he is starting to get to know Sam Howell as a quarterback. So some of them, some people are saying he oops, tipped his hand and said, hey, we're going quarterback at number two. Some people are saying it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I'll let you guys kind of decide which way you think that that went. And if you haven't heard it yet, it will be here on the clip. No video of it, but you will hear the audio of the answer that Adam Peters gave and what he said uh, there at the end. And he, of course, he was less descriptive about what he wants in a quarterback, but head coach Dan Quinn was a little bit more descriptive. What Dan Quinn said he wants in his quarterbacks is, first of all, toughness. Well, Sam Howell, speaking of the quarterback that exists, and before we get too deep into this, I just want everybody to understand this is just a conversation about the quarterback that is on the roster. I'm not sitting here to say that he's better than Caleb, Jaden, Drake, JJ, Michael, Bo, anybody else. Just, just conversation about what happened with Sam Howell, okay? So Sam Howell, so Dan Quinn wants toughness in a quarterback. Well, again, Sam Howell certainly did hit a wall last season. I think we all kind of witnessed that. His play certainly started to hurt uh, and suffer from it at the end of the season. But his first start, uh, first start season in the NFL, it's kind of hard to blame uh, Sam Howell for hitting that wall. He did lead the league in pass attempts, 612 of them to be exact. And that's a lot of throws for any quarterback. And he also led the league in pressures. Now, some of those pressures, certainly his own fault, uh, but some of them not his fault. Some of them drawn up by scheme, some of them by poor blocking. Uh, some of them just by poor game management and uh, teams pinning their ears back and still trying to run uh, deep passes and and all those types of things. Dan Quinn also said he wants a quarterback that can extend plays. Well, we certainly saw Sam Howell be able to extend plays in his first year as a starting NFL quarterback uh, last season plenty of times, sometimes to his own detriment. Sometimes you'd rather, you'd rather he just kind of kill the ball 
uh, live to play another down type of thing, but certainly capable of extending plays. Not a Lamar Jackson, not a Patrick Mahomes, but certainly capable, right? Accuracy. Now, there were certainly moments where Sam Al's accuracy waned. I think down the stretch, his accuracy definitely started to fall off as you kind of saw him hit that, what I'm going to call a rookie wall, even though he wasn't a rookie in the NFL, and uh, but it was his rookie starting season, so to speak. And I think for quarterbacks, uh, that is that is still significant. Your first year as a starting quarterback is significant, whether it's your rookie season uh, or your second season. Um, accuracy, though, however, was pretty good overall uh, for Sam Howell in 2023. According to Sports Info Solutions, 84% of Sam Howell's passes uh, were catchable out of 612. Now, 84%, not exactly number one in the league. I think it's about, it's about number 20, if I remember correctly. So not the highest in the league either. But anytime you have a quarterback delivering, if you got 84% of 612 passes uh, catchable, certainly uh, enough anyway as a quarterback to be able to put your team in position to win. And I think we look back at the last season, we saw plenty of games where Sam Howell did put the team in position to win, just other things sometimes not running the ball when you should be running the ball, sometimes the defense, uh, sometimes a combination of things ended up in losses. However, interceptions is where Sam Howell had the the biggest problem, especially down that stretch as he, as he came to and collided with uh, said wall. He led the league in interceptions in 2023 with 21 of them. Uh, however, I, this is kind of where I went down the rabbit hole a little bit. I kind of got curious and I said, you know what? Let me look at some of these numbers. And this is where we kind of split off from what was said at the combine. And now I'm kind of, like I said, going down a little bit of a rabbit hole here. Uh, 142 times in the Super Bowl era, a quarterback has thrown 21 or more interceptions in a single season. Uh, 142 times. So 21 interceptions in a single season, while it seems and feels disastrous as you're watching, and certainly uh, not that big of an anomaly, or not as big of an anomaly as maybe we would want it to be or think that it was, especially in a passing league. Uh, of those 142 quarterback seasons, and I put it that way because it's not 142 individual quarterbacks, it's quarterback seasons. So some of those quarterbacks are repeat offenders, uh, guys like Jameis Winston, for example. Uh, but 142 quarterback seasons uh, have resulted in 21 or more interceptions in a single season. Of those quarterbacks, Howell is, the, Howell is seventh in pass attempts while doing so he has the seventh most pass attempts while throwing 21 or more interceptions and he threw the floor 21 interceptions uh he was the only one of those quarterbacks those seven who did it in his first season as a starter now what does that mean now to some that might say well that means that he's the the worst of the bunch but in reality of all the quarterbacks who have thrown 21 or more interceptions in a single season Howell had the third lowest interception percentage the season in which he did it the only ones who had better interception percentages while throwing 21 interceptions, meaning they threw a lot more passes as well. Drew Brees and Warren Moon, neither of them in their first years as starting quarterbacks. Howell also threw 21 touchdowns, something only 59 of the 142 quarterbacks who threw 21 or more interceptions in a season have done. Again, he is the least experienced quarterback on this list and achieved a level of production while doing the 21 interceptions that only 42% of the rest of the group was able to achieve. Now, despite having a 4%, a sub 4% touchdown rate, uh, in 2023, if you scheme and coach him to just hit the middle of the pack in touchdown percentage in that group, 4.1% touchdown per, uh, percentage, he's throwing 25 touchdown passes. Now, that's not going to necessarily get you to the playoffs, but it's certainly better. Now, while 142 quarterbacks have thrown 21 or more touchdowns, only 55 have thrown 612 or more passes in a single season. And again, that's not 55 individual quarterbacks, guys. That's 55 quarterback seasons in the entire Super Bowl era of the NFL only 55 times has a quarterback thrown 612 or more passes in a single season. Uh, that's that's not that many. And the other quarterbacks that have had to do that have had that many pass attempts. Uh, those names include Matthew Stafford, Matt Ryan, Ben Roethlisberger, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Patrick Mahomes, Rich Gannon, Joe Flacco, Brett Favre, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and amongst others. So Super Bowl winning or Super Bowl cont contending quarterbacks. And oh, by the way, Sam Howell thrown in the mix there. Furthermore, none of those quarterbacks, almost none of those quarterbacks, rather, was a first-year starter. All of them, almost all of them, were established quarterbacks. The only exception, Andrew Luck in 2012. One other quarterback in the Super Bowl era has had that many pass attempts in a season, and only one of them other than Sam Howell, a first-year starter. And that guy was considered the most complete quarterback prospect we've seen in, I don't know, two decades. Meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, Brock Purdy's career high in attempts is 37 in a single game, and he's got 21 career starts. In 18 career starts, Sam Howell's career high in pass attempts in a single game, 52. He surpassed 37, Brock Purdy's career high, nine times. Half of Sam Howell's starts 
he threw for more or the same. Actually, it's just more because he didn't have 37. Sam Howell threw for more than Brock Purdy's career high in pass attempts in half of his starts so far in his career. That's a lot of throwing, guys. So that's the rabbit hole that it took me down. Again, kind of taken off of what Adam Peters and Dan Quinn said about the quarterback position, but I'm going to let you hear it from their own mouths. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to do that today. Thanks to our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel wants you to get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers, you're getting $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your $5 bet wins. You can put it on any game, any spread, any prop, anything you want to. You could even put it on the NBA Finals. You're going to have to wait a little bit for the, for the payout to come, but the Boston Celtics currently are plus 230 favorites to win the NBA Finals. The Denver Nuggets are currently plus 440 in second place. So the Nuggets and, and Celtics are your favorites to make it to the NBA Finals out of each conference. Meanwhile, the San Francisco 49ers are current favorites to win Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans next season. The Kansas City Chiefs are favored to come out of the AFC as they look to win a third straight and set NFL history for being the first team to do so. You can bet on all your favorite NFL team futures, all your NBA players, and your NBA teams with quick bets. They've also got live same game parlays, exclusive props, and even more. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? Would you show up for a friend in need? I would probably watch more film. That's probably honestly what I would do. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. But the question is, more time for what exactly? What if you? What would you do if your time was unlimited? How would you go about using it? The best way for you to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you in the first place and then how to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters so you can do more of it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at no time or at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make what make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. On now today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day. Every day, every day, or thanks for coming through. Come back tomorrow. There is more stuff here from Adam Peters and Dan Quinn that I want to talk to other than just the quarterbacks, but the quarterback stuff was pretty deep. So we're going to talk a lot about that here today, but there is more stuff, including about how I might have been right about Jamin Davis. And I'm not usually the one to pat myself on the back, but I just thought it was interesting timing because we just talked about the linebackers on Tuesday. And then we talked about him again with with the uh, the leaders of the team, and, and I just thought it was interesting. So we'll share a little bit of that for you on our Thursday episode. Also, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with your local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel hearing now from your Washington Commanders general manager Adam Peters on quarterbacks yeah really with Brock um, he was he was always composed he was always like he is now he's the same guy every day and really his tape was what really turned us on and he beat the person but um, this is only just a little bit part of the process, but his tape and everything that he did at Iowa State and how, how well he plays, how well he played the position, we really thought that he could really fit in well with our scheme. And, and uh, if we thought he was that good, we probably wouldn't wait until the last pick. But uh, now we, we liked him that much. And um, now, now I've got to find a new quarterback. Position in particular, what do you try to get out of the combine? Um, I'm sorry, what was the beginning of that? For evaluating quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. What do you try to get out of the combine? I think the, the biggest thing in the combine, the two biggest things are, everybody says it, it's the uh, it's the medical portion, which it's, I'm not a part of that. I just see it all the results and then the interviews. And we're going to interview a lot of quarterbacks as well as a lot of other players here. So, um, so that's really the, the first touch point that we'll have with these guys. I haven't met any of them in person. 
and really excited to meet them. We're going to meet some tonight, some tomorrow, and and that's just the beginning of the process in terms of that. It's a huge part of really any position is getting to know the person. That's that's where we've always found in, in scouting. You you make the biggest mistakes more so on the person than the actual talent. I think we're all here for a reason in terms of being talent evaluators, everybody in our staff, but understanding what, what makes that person tick and how they'll fit in your locker room and your particular culture is, is the biggest thing where you can make mistakes on. What have you learned about Caleb Williams from the Really, Cliff and I haven't talked too much specifically on him. We really just talked about quarterback play in general. Um, and what he looks for in quarterbacks and how we can find that right fit for him if that's what we're going to do. And certainly that hasn't been decided yet by any stretch of the imagination. We still have a lot of work to do. What we're going to do, uh, whether it's that pick or later, uh, we really like what we have in Sam right now. So we're really excited about that too. I had a, a great, it's kind of funny, I learned this from John Lynch. When you're sitting in your office all day, you kind of just get in this rut where you're just like it's dark, you've got all these weird lights and you need to get out. So Sam came to the, the facility a couple weeks ago and got a chance to hang out. And instead of sitting in my office, we just took a walk. Took a walk around uh, uh, Commander's Park and uh, around the fields and got to know him a little bit better. So I feel really good about him too. So um, we got a lot of different things we can do, but still really excited about him. All right, there's Adam Peters, your general manager. And again, uh, some good stuff there from him at the NFL Scouting Combine. Also something that Adam Peters talked about during his podium time, during his scrum time. Uh, also, said, also said you always want to have competition in every room, not just quarterback room, but you want to have competition. He was asked specifically about potentially bringing a veteran in uh, along with Sam Howell. And he said, you know, you want that competition. You want good leadership. You want good groups in every single room. So, you know, essentially saying yes, like you would you would rather have veterans and competition everywhere. But we've been talking a lot about the quarterback situation this offseason, and I've been saying, like, at a bare minimum, uh, look, I like Sam. I think Sam brings a lot to the table, um, and I do have some confidence that he can be the franchise leader moving in the future, but I also see what happened at the end of last season, and no matter what you think about Sam, I think that if you see that, you kind of have to go uh, pause for just a second and say, hey, you know what? We need to bring this guy some competition uh, to make sure that we're giving our team the best chance to be successful. So I do expect competition uh, at some way, shape, or in some way, shape, or form, whether that be a veteran or rookie. Uh, or otherwise, pretty much only two other options, right? Uh, speaking of, one one way that the Washington Commanders could go ahead and bring in some competition is by making a trade, not just a trade in the draft, but also a trade for another player. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first, let's go back to your GM. Since you got into the league until now, how have you changed the way you evaluate quarterbacks, whether that's trade value differently or your process? I think, yeah, you learn more and more every time you do it. And... Most of them are mistakes. I, I feel like it's really hard to evaluate quarterbacks, but um, you just try to get better and try to understand what you did the last time that was really good and what you did last time that was really bad, different processes. Hopefully there's not a whole lot of bad things that you did, but you always learn. Um, and so it's constantly evolving, and, and I don't think you know, anybody has the magic pill to understand that one. Um, if, you know, if they do, let me know. I'll hire them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, I think that's it. Just keep learning. Every year you do it. I think any any trade that's ever been made is is a data point to give you a guideline on, on if you were to make a trade, what what the compensation would be. Um, so I mean, that's the best answer to that. You understand what the value is if, if you were to make a trade, and, and you use that with a bunch of other comps and your analytics and your admin to think about if, if that's something you wanted to do all right this is what it would look like all right so once again there's adam peters talking about trades and what's something that's interesting the chicago bears leadership was also speaking on tuesday at the nfl scouting combine and basically said they would like to have justin field's situation figured out and sorted very very quickly uh i basically look at this as them saying we're going to interview the quarterback that we want and as long as we come out of that interview feeling good we're going to pull the trigger on trading Justin Fields. So, I mean, Justin Fields may be traded by the time we leave Indianapolis, guys. I mean, uh, it's it's certainly possible in a world of reality. Justin Fields could be traded by the time you're watching this episode. So, uh, whether that be the Washington Commander or somebody else, certainly uh, a possibility. So, keep your eyes out uh, for that. That's certainly going to have an impact. Because, I mean, if he goes to the Patriots, that's going to impact the draft. If he goes to the Falcons, so on and so forth, right? Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, just like we have been all day, let's hear those quarterback traits from the man himself, your head coach, Dan Quinn. That's how we're going to round out today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.
And we're going to do that thanks to our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They've got superchargers. They've got roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. I don't know how roof racks keep your vehicle running, but if you need a roof rack, eBay Motors has got it for you. They've had over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Motors and with eBay's guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back because with eBay Motors, you're going to burn rubber. You're not going to burn cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Number one, you better be really tough, mentally, physically tough, because there's going to be times when the person is open on the physical toughness. You got to stay in there to deliver it, you know, into the right spot. Um, I think you have to have the mental toughness to withstand all that's going on and keep your focus right here on the team, right with the group that you're with. Um, as far as like a performance side, I think you better show accuracy on the deep ball because when those moments for explosive plays are there, there's a, a single high coverage, it's a man-to-man, -man, it's an all-out blitz, and you nail those moments, that's where the explosive plays are driven. So um, you certainly want to look for a quarterback who can get out of a bad play. You know, in our NFL, it doesn't just all time up evenly. I think if you guys look at the stats, we have more mobile scrambling quarterbacks this year than maybe at any time over the last 20 years. And so, a lot of that is when a play breaks down, they can go create and get on the move to go. And so how do you speed up when a blitz is coming and it's not there yet? You buy time to let that happen. Those are traits that are hard to measure. They're not accuracy. How do you get out of a bad play? There's not a metric for that. How do you speed up a throw that the blitz is coming? It's not quite there yet, but you have to get rid of it early because you're about to get drilled. Those are things that you look for. And so that's why at that position, the tape, the tape, the tape. You have to find that. You have to get out of bad plays. You got to be able to speed up. You got to show that kind of toughness. And um, there's all sorts of ways to look at it. I can certainly remember um, during my time in Atlanta inviting Ron Wolf down to training camp um, just so I could spend two days with him evaluating quarterbacks that were in that year's draft. What did you see? And what did it look like? And I can remember we were watching one player and there was an interception and he had said, wind that back. And I was looking, thinking he was thinking about the interception. No, no, you could let it run now. And it was to see how hard was the player going after that had the interception. So like he wasn't looking at the mechanic of the throw. He was studying the person and the competitiveness of stuff. So I think there's a lot of details that go into that position. We probably have a really long press conference on it, but um, it's also what makes my job and Adam's job really fun to make sure you're finding somebody with rare, unique stuff um, and then develop it over and over and over. Wrap it up today's episode of Locked On Commanders talking about the NFL scouting combine. We've been hearing from Dan Quinn and Adam Peters, and I talked a little bit about what I took away from the, what they were saying and then also went down this little rabbit hole uh, that I dove down into here in my Airbnb on Tuesday evening. Uh, but we're also going to talk about the quarterbacks that are coming up this weekend, uh, NFL, quarter, uh, NFL draft quarterback prospect interviews happening on Thursday, I believe, and then they're throwing on Friday. However, three of them will not be thrown. So you may have heard already before, Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels have opted to not work out at the NFL Scouting Combine. So they are here doing the medicals. They are here doing the interviews. In fact, as we speak right now, Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams or even Drake May or any number of quarterbacks could be interviewing with your Washington Commanders brass. Uh, like I said, as we speak, Dan Quinn is obviously here. Adam Peters is obviously here. Josh Harris and and and. and uh, his advisory group is also here in Indianapolis. So make that for a uh, read into that as you will. But uh, Drake may also was announced or revealed by uh, uh, a report. I can't remember who the report was from. I apologize. I think it was Josina Anderson uh, reported Tuesday morning. Drake may also will not work out. So your top three quarterback prospects, none of them working out. I do expect them to work out their pro days. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not going to Los Angeles to go to USC's pro day. Sorry, just not going to do it. I might go to North Carolina. I might go to Baton Rouge. Um, we will see, but I am not going to Los Angeles, especially if the Washington Mayors haven't traded up 
for the number one overall pick. And if the Chicago Bears trade Justin Fields, I'm just not just not going to make that trip, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so those three quarterbacks not throwing. Still plenty of quarterbacks to watch. Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., J.J. McCarthy uh, among them. There are some other, other quarterbacks obviously worth your time if you like watching the drills. I will be in the stadium at Lucas Oil watching the drills as well. I know plenty of my other Commanders Beat Reporter cohorts uh, will be as well. Uh, in other news, significant upgrades are coming to FedEx. The team announced on Tuesday, which is kind of weird because there's a lot of news going on. Usually they save good news for quiet days, but uh, they're adding significant upgrades to FedEx field, bringing the targeted investments that the new ownership group has made more up to up to to up to more than $75 million uh, again under the new leadership. According to the press release, the upgrades are going to be noticeable from the moment you, the fans, enter the parking lots and include faster entry into the system or the stadium, new premium seating options and sweet experiences, improved food and beverage options and sound system upgrades. The stat- stadium is also getting a structural refresh is what they're calling, including upgrades to elevators and escalators, water and mechanical systems. Thank you. Uh, and our other infrastructure improvements are coming. Fans are going to have the opportunity to enjoy new experiences throughout game day, including a VIP field tunnel club where you can purchase access to cheer on the commanders from feet away as the team takes the field. That's pretty cool. The 1932 club is an entirely new premium suite space, upgraded furniture and carpeting in select premium areas, new terrace tables, and an upgraded USO lounge for veterans and military members. That's super cool throughout the stadium. The organization is also improving food and beverage service, including new market concepts and drink lanes that will allow fans to get back to their seats more quickly. Uh, The team also is making a substantial investment to improve sound quality throughout the stadium. Uh, Additionally, thanks to simpler, more efficient parking system and frictionless security entry points, fans are going to get to tail from the tailgate into the stadium at game time much Faster. Also, on March 9th and 10th, fans who have a deposit for season tickets will be able to choose from the best available seats at the annual Select Your Seat event at the stadium. So, if all that's got you excited, sounds pretty exciting to me, uh, then you can get in there to select your seat by making a deposit before March 9th. I'm sure that you know how to find the Washington Commanders website to go ahead and do that stuff. So, interesting things happen around the Washington Commanders, guys. A lot of Fun stuff, again, whether it's Sam Howell, whether it's Jaden Daniels, whether it's somebody else starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. A lot of fun, a lot of exciting things happening. Fast, violent, uh, intensive team is what you're going to have in 2024, according to what we're being told uh, right now. Coming up tomorrow, more from the NFL Scouting Combine, probably more from Dan Quinn and Adam Peters. Also talking to defensive linemen and linebackers. So if there's specific players in those two groups that you want to hear from, drop them in the YouTube comment section. Or if you're an insider, just text me. Just go to your phone. Text me if you're not an insider and you want to text me. Join subtext.com slash locked on commanders to do that today. Don't forget to check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever 24-7 live sports streaming channel on YouTube. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thanks for coming through like you do. Until we speak again, please be safe, be kind. I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.